what I'm saying? So I want you to listen to what I'm saying again. You can keep principles. The principles of God, anybody can keep. But it doesn't mean you are saved. And today in the church, we're offering people principles. Do you know why? Because we're no longer preaching the cross. Which is the place of transformation. And so we're having, we're having, we're having what we call now a seeker-friendly gospel. Where we can speak about God, but we cannot speak direct. We don't speak much about the blood, which is where your life changes. Talk to me, somebody, without blood, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Let me tell you, let me tell you how powerful the blood of Jesus is. In the Old Testament, they had a word which, we, which basically symbolized covering. Your sins were covered. Now, hear this now. It doesn't say that your sin was no longer there. It just said your sin was covered. Okay, now in the New Testament, you know what the scripture teaches? The Bible says that we have remission of sin. Now, you know the difference between a covering and a remission? The word remission, imagine this now, it means to be put out of existence. So in other words, if the devil comes to accuse you before the face of Almighty God, you didn't hear it. I said, if the devil comes to accuse you before the face of Almighty God, even though you may have sinned, but from the moment you repent in the mind of God, in the mind of God, who is eternal, it no longer exists. If it did exist anymore, it would mean the blood is not as powerful as we believed. So therefore then, now you understand you have a remission. So hear me right now. Why is it you can keep the principles of God? I know people who, well, he don't hear my point again. You can keep the principles of God and not be changed. So we're living in a day and age today where in the body of Christ, we have a deficit of change. How many of you here want your lives changed? How many of you here believe God is able to change your life? Okay, it's all good. But where does, where does change begin? I've got news to tell you. It begins at the cross. The cross isn't going anywhere. Let me tell you how powerful the blood of Jesus is. In fact, 1 Corinthians 2 goes as far as to say, Had the princes of this world known it, if they knew what Jesus' sacrifice would have done, if they knew what it represented, the scripture says they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. And we're removing from the church the hallmark of Jesus' victory on the earth over the enemy to just teach the principles of God. So the secret of it is you preach the cross, you teach the cross, and then you give the people the principles to live by. When you put that together, you'll have power. Okay. So I want you to follow me tonight. So let me get back to what I started out with because this to me is very, very important. We want to establish the basis for the supernatural. Now, hear me clear now. If you flip the TV screen, <clears throat> you will notice that there are a lot of shows on TV that are demonic and they are classed as fiction but you who are spiritual you can see the demonic influence on it could it be that Hollywood has tapped into let me say it that way could it be that Hollywood has tapped into a market simply because the church doesn't know the church what the church is running from is what Hollywood is walking in so that probably explains why occult and witchcraft it probably explains why that's multiplying quicker because the church to be cute and to be politically correct we don't want to talk about anything about the supernatural well I've got news to tell you one I believe in the supernatural I don't care if you agree with me or not I don't care I'm not interested as for me I believe in the supernatural I believe he turned water into wine 
I believe he raised Lazarus from the dead and I believe that he died on the cross and after one, two, three days he picked himself up out of the grave. As for me, I believe it. As for me, I believe he turned water into wine. I believe he multiplied bread and fish and I believe he's the same yesterday, today and forever. And I believe that the record of God, it stands sure. So who am I to no longer believe the supernatural? In fact, you could argue. If you say you believe in God and you don't believe in the supernatural, it couldn't be God. Because you can't say you believe in God without the supernatural. So could it be now that the church is going to the in, into entertaining because they can't produce what they preach?